Before the slideshow begins, I should explain that all of Holly's paintings were inspired by a trip we took to Bermuda a few years ago. There won't be any direct correlation with the eight poems I'm going to read, although three of the poems are broadly about Bermuda. Back to Bermuda. Even if the second landing day is overcast, unlike the sunny, unrepeatable first, arrival still is glistening. It vibrates, scintillates between expectancy and recollection. Glamour of contrast, so soon after you had seen the snowflakes float outside the on-ramp. Behind you now, exhilaration of the runway, the stock discomfort of the cramped, strapped seat, those tense, routine, connective means to this bright, open end, the passport stamp, gate out. Then, after the complacent address given the friendly taxi man, first shimmering sight of aquamarine shallows from the causeway. The little cliffs of curved gray sponge hold rock that closely line the twisting slender roads, how fast they swish by the sure clip of the vehicle. The palms wave more brown at the tips this April, but here are the low nasturtiums dotted yellow, orange, and hedging sideways red hibiscus with pink oleanders burgeoning above in faithful clusters. The chalk-white ziggurats of roofs atop the all-size pastel cottages and mansions embed among the varying green-shaded swaths that sway somewhere between tame jungle and loose garden. Overcast though it is, you know full well the sun will soon show this in proper glorious fullness. Quicken the mild wind to stir and further lift the light within you. Stretch its widening range. Island Reserve. What was glassed in back home from the gray cold bursts out of each yard here, leans along lanes jumbo size like prepossessing weeds. Rather than dandelions, rampant nasturtiums, not hedges, but red hibiscus watch your long walk. Columnar palms, palmettos, big agaves, fragrances of oleander and jasmine, well tended by gentle wind off ocean skies. Residents must deserve this. The brief visitor pays at a proper steepness for such time, value returned with an inestimable ease. What then if exquisite slid on to common? If everywhere grew nothing besides garden, You'd root back in chill crannies of the human or seek wilder religion out at sea. Coastal Poem The blue light of a Pacific quietude, unbroken in a singular steady wave, reared out beyond the shoreline of horizon, blues this near sea on toward the wrinkling fingers that ply the tuneless, measureless background roar and hiss from overlap of foamy symbols, brushed by pulses without channel or a name, corroding all notation shelved on the sand. If only there flowed in from such cold wonder some base assurance some riptide surmise that the whole dome and fluent depth below it bond as life itself might do with that which is. 
ruin. You can imagine what is there no longer, erect in mind's eye, perhaps an arch, a roof line, tower, only if you sometimes saw a comparable cathedral, mansion, solid row of workers' homes, intact, survivor of artillery and bomb of fire, of earthquake, or of developers' more lucrative demolitions. What if instead all you can do is gaze at the low remains with nothing more to latch on to, extrapolate from, than a few worn down foundation stones, a stub of column, maybe scrap of wall? What qualities can they show by themselves? What value offer and what significance if this reduction is the total one can know. What if we collectively are doing to the world that was, its earlier human structures and the natural realm they marred much less? What if that process now leaves us at most odd unrelated relics, ruined not just physically, but beyond comprehension only, or not even, desolated memory, a wipe of data, irrecoverable. But is all lost? So much raised long ago is digitized. Go Google, better, buy an app, download archival videos and simulations, take a virtual tour of any edifice, outside and in, reconstituted. Still better, once new VR comes online, immerse inside a hollow, tailored, interactive with your preferences. Some even will offer something like the smell. An outdoor vigil. Breathing is well. Half consciously, breathe deeper. Draw an inch more of green scent down your lungs. Maybe now see the tree branches as rungs on an ascent that isn't any steeper for the mind's eye than to search tips of tongues that name each darting bird or the spring peeper, or spot the resting place of that black leaper on a storm-broken bow. How you have clung to safe near shelves and even been a sleeper in easy nightmare, not awakened song, allowing as the norm what is plain wrong with the exhausted air. You are a keeper of slopes where the clear spirit still belongs. At Flower Garden Heart. To feel green rhythms of green forms as double fullness in themselves, in blooms, how grown into the sphere of air they breathe. The sheer sensation without word, instinct alive outside of thought, green force ever informing while it wavers through to more than tap into, but fuse, absorb, by glimpses interchanged, in, out, sent deep amidst and on along this course. A weld immersive yearn to keep the mode of bumblebee, golden thigh deep in wading up that lavender fir spire. Full purpose at one with to be, all unalone, a nectared ecstasy, gone solely on the core and larger mission. Like the lush blossom in itself, whole orb of fragrant, fringed eternity, full-bodied soul, 
or leafy shoot, its freed bond between sapient root and seed, parts that give back to the imparting giver, bound beyond the husk of private need. Ode to Mango You multi-tinged, dinosaur egg-shaped vessel of deliciousness, so fragrant when just ripe, with ruddy patch blushed out of orange-yellow from the original dark green, firm giving, inside one solid mango-shaded third embeds the inedible long-thatched seed, your other side softly sliceable, gnawable, slurpable, happily messily leaking the sweet nectar I tilt from the platter into my mouth with sticky hands. Now, of course, if we eat Thai, we'll get younger meat of you, pale greenish, slivered atop tangy salad. And we can down you in straight juice or mix together with yogurt in sumptuous lassi or else infused with elixirous rum. Yum. But then, prior to my sensual revel, I cannot bypass a grateful reflection on each encounter with you, you far-traveled treat, shipped north for who knows how much longer from a lush landscape filled with rampant green by an overhead sun I've not ever seen, wanting to feel supply chains are fair, long behind your gracing my tongue and on beyond the rind. And my last poem, Departure from the Island of Away. Departure from the island of away brings on a sober tinge in prospect when you wake into that fleeting final day. What's left to see and do could well be for the last time ever. Better shove aside regret at the unvisited and file the wondering recap for a future night the row of shuttered photos evidence, its bright eclipse of a more intimate gathering back. Sight of the long tail's ivory wings, rare threatened flower, odd little presences, quick skink, immobile moon snail, that uncapturable shade of lavender spreading in wet glaze up the tawny sand. And then the taste of the impeccably sauced catch of the day. Archive it, together with white scent of oleander, natal plum, nectar of red honeysuckle. Imprint from the placid bay of islets, the sparkly royal blue undulations. Pretend the sun warming this moist salt air is cousin to what beams on your home lake. Under last night's clear stars, the sadness in eighth-note flutings of the tree frogs was yours only. All yours here to make from what might simply be incongruous caprice and mere escape to excess luxury. This integral oasis beyond easy trope of paradise one never can regain. Convey its buoyancy deep in you, down into your bedrock, like a stubborn faith pooled for the betterment of all you care for anywhere. Soak its outlandish light across a forward vision loosed from time. <laughs>